What's up, sons? It's Blindrod with Side of Tech once again, and I am super excited to bring you guys my first official content for the Radeon RX 5700 XT. So I don't actually have an RX 5700 or, of course, the Anniversary Edition. I have the one right in between. However, I do have an Anniversary Edition on the way, and I'll figure out the 5700 later. Today, though, I, I believe you guys have probably already seen a majority of the benchmarks and can figure a lot of that out. We did do live benchmarking, so if you're interested in the live benchmarking, you can check out that video. I'll link it up here in the corner. Uh, as far as performance, the GPU is pretty good. I, I, I think that there are some driver-related issues that once they get resolved, you're going to see some pretty crazy and incredible performance coming out of this GPU. Today, I wanted to talk about getting up to an additional 15% performance using the soft power play registry hack or mod or modification, however you want to look at it. I'm going to show you guys how to do it. This should work across the board for all of the RX 5700 series GPUs and has proven to increase performance even on the stock reference cooler, which is what I have currently installed in my system. I haven't even reapplied thermal paste or anything like that. So the numbers you see here are numbers you can expect, of course, if you have the reference cooler. A couple of notes or disclaimers about that would be, of course, do this at your own risk. It could cause things like boot issues if you do this incorrectly. It could cause overheating issues. Um, pretty much guaranteed that the car is going to get hotter, so you want to monitor your temperatures. And uh, of course, it could cause other issues with the GPU driver etc and so on so this is all at your own risk but there wasn't an English version up even in text form so I wanted to get this out to you guys so if you like playing around with overclocking and so on you'll be able to get going with it as quickly as possible so let's move on over to the PC and get to it okay so first things first you have the basically the Google Translate article that I will link to you guys from Tom's Hardware. It's going to go over uh, how to do it and then at the bottom you'll have the downloads for the registry edit and you can see here basically what it's going to do. It's going to increase your max overclock, your max memory overclock, and of course your power limit and the core voltage. So the core voltage is the most important thing you want to pay attention to here because anytime you overvolt, of course, you're going to significantly increase heat and possibly um, hurt the longevity of your GPU. So if you want to be extra careful, you can just pop in this more power and it won't it basically won't overvolt. There's no overvolt setting here. That's the same goes goes uh, for the 5700 here. You can do that and you'll be good to go. The zip files are down below. I have unlocked them and I have run them through a virus scanner. I didn't find anything, so they seem to be on the up and up, which I would expect from, of course, Tom's hardware. Let's get into how you're gonna do this. So first of all, you can go ahead and download the zip file just by clicking it. It'll download it. You can click save, open folder, and then right click 7-zip or just use the built-in extract here for Windows and extract it. Once you've extracted it, you're gonna have all of the registry files right here. We're gonna go into how to go ahead and import those into your registry after we go over basically what I would call the most simple way to make sure you have this working properly. So if you do Windows key R, it'll open up the run prompt, type in regedit, R-E-G, E D I T and press enter for OK. The easiest way to get to the key that you need is by going ahead and just copying out the path that they have set for you guys. And then it should look something like this. I will also post it the article, the link to the article, as well as just post this actual location down there. In some cases, even with only one GPU ever being installed in the system, even if you have reinstalled drivers once and not fully cleaned it with DDU, you might have 0001 and extra entries. For this to import correctly, what you're going to need to do is run DDU 
from safe mode. So to enter safe mode, we can go to advanced startup options and click the restart now. And then we're gonna click troubleshoot, advanced options, startup settings, and then restart. At this point, we're gonna select safe mode with networking, get logged into safe mode. And we are going to go get DDU, which I'll link down below. You can do a quick Google search for it though. So if you do, oop. so if you open up, so if you open up, <laughs> let's see if Internet Explorer will work for us. I don't know why that keeps auto closing. Computers, they're fun. So if you open up and just hit up Google, you can go ahead and search for DDU and this top one will be it. Once you download it uh, from the mirrors, it will download to your downloads folder as a zipped file. You can right click 7-zip, extract here. Once it's extracted, you'll have to run the installer, which will be this little guy here. And then once that's done, you'll have a folder with display driver uninstaller that you're going to run. Then you're going to select the GPU uh, AMD in this case. If you have other entries, run all of them. If you have an Intel system, make sure you run the one for Intel as well to get rid of that because you're going to want to get rid of all of the entries that you possibly can. And then you can say uh, clean and do not restart or restart. It just depends. But here we're just going to go ahead and clean and restart because we're not too worried about it doing any other additional drivers. If you were running an Intel system with an integrated GPU and iGPU, it is pretty likely that Windows will auto detect that and install it. So I would clean and not restart and then import the uh, registry before uh, restarting the PC. Now that the PC is restarted, we shouldn't have any graphics card drivers or anything like that. If we type the windows key r and get back into our registry we should just have one entry here as you can see um, we just have the one zero 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 that it was detected so at this point we can go ahead and install our amd drivers for the 5700 we only really have one driver available at this time i have it on a usb drive around here somewhere haha -ha, we got the windows 10 May edition green screen bug there. That's fun. Not fun, by the way. This has been a problem across multiple graphics cards and multiple systems. If you guys are seeing this, just try to uh, bounce your system. It should go away. I'm thinking Windows on Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, during Patch Tuesday, will get this resolved. But um, it's kind of expected right now and not necessarily has anything to do with your actual graphics card. All right, so now that we have the driver installed, we can go ahead and hit Windows key run again, go into regedit, and we just want to go ahead and verify that we only have one entry under the path that we are looking for. So just should have one zero 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 and that just denotes that we only have one GPU basically installed or ever registered uh, <laughs> registered with the registry. Yeah, let's use that incorrect terminology. It doesn't really matter. You guys understand. So at this point, we need to import the new uh, registry entry, which we go, went ahead and already downloaded at the beginning of the video. To do that, in registry editor, click file and import. You should go to your downloads file and have it already extracted and you should have all of your power settings. You're going to select the one you desire and click open, keeping in mind that anything above the basic more power will adjust voltages and being very careful about that. And what I would recommend doing is starting with the base one, running some stability tests and bumping yourself up as you see fit if your card is if you're lucky with your card and it can cool uh, a lot of the times even on my card which seems to be uh, basically a little bit above the rest as far as the cooling goes i got a little lucky uh, it will start overheating 
once you start pushing those overclocks. That being said, once you click OK, it'll just say the keys and values contained in uh, have successfully added to the registry and you can click OK. So that's pretty basic and pretty much how it goes. At this point, restart the PC. And then you're going to open your afterburner or other overclocking software. And then what you should see is your power limit should be able to go up to 90. Your core clock, even though we're not going to apply it, should go way, way high up to 2300. Now it will say higher no matter what, even when you don't have that applied until you click check. Once you click check, you see how it uh, adjusts itself to the 2300. If you don't have this applied, it'll adjust itself to the max of lower than that. The highest on the memory clock allowed uh, with this profile is 1000 like that and so you should be able to make all of these setting changes successfully that being said uh, if you are running the reference cooler the best settings i found that seem to stay within of course the overclock and not like crashing or anything is going to be 2100 and 900 now that's my particular card your card may vary the absolute highest I can get if we crank and manually set the fan to 100% at all times was 2190, which is pretty good. And then on water, etc., people are getting to 2200 very, very easily. But at 2190 and these particular settings, 900 on the memory clock and the power limit turned all the way up with the fan profile set aggressively, we were able to get a 15% increase in our fire strike score, which came out to about a 28,000. Let me see if I can pull this up for you guys. So if we take a look at my detailed score, you guys will see here that we got a graphic score of 28,346. Um, and the test bench is a Ryzen 7 2700, so we aren't hitting like the crazy overall scores would probably be with the 9900 or 9700K would be around 25,000. Typically, from what I saw, once you apply this profile, there's only one other guy I've seen apply the profile so far. And then those are your result details. If we come down to the graphics card, you can see it's the RX 5700 XT core clock came out to 2134 so a little under about 60 under was the boost of whatever we had set in MSI afterburner and the memory clock of 900 megahertz so there you go sons there's how you can go ahead and get your RX Radeon 5700 XT performing about 15% better than stock and I hope this video was helpful it took me a while to get it figured out because of the Google Translate and so on and so forth. And I highly recommend, of course, doing this with either an AIB board or grabbing yourself a water block whenever EK or Alpha Cool has one available. I am looking forward to testing this more and we will be testing it on the anniversary edition here shortly. Thanks for watching. Let me know if it helped you out in the comment section below. Leave a like, come check out the Discord and come join me in some games. I will be putting my live streams on YouTube probably because they're easy, but we won't be like saving the VODs. We'll figure it all out. Let me know what you guys prefer. See you next Tuesday.